Tuesday morning, friends. It is time for Coffee with Kristen and Tina. Good morning. Welcome to Coffee with Kristen and Tina. This is we Kristen are live Pizzo. from Manitowoc County. <laughs> hey, I don't see our names this morning. I wonder why we don't have our names on the screen. Oh, there you go. I was going to say, I could be known as the Wisconsin girl today if that if we needed to. <laughs> this by is Kristen Vagabond. Adele, the Wisconsin girl. This is Miss Vagabond over here. So how's everybody doing? How are you doing this morning, Kristen? It's so good to see you. I am doing great this morning, although you obviously can tell I've got lighting on again. It's another rainy, dreary day. And as the girls and I talked about this morning on the way to school, Good morning, you know, we had a very wet spring. We had a wet summer and there is now standing water in the farm fields this fall. I fear this means we are going to have maybe per not, perhaps not a wet winter, but a snowy winter. If the precipitation continues, it's going to be mm -hmm. a fun winter. I think that's a good observation because it is really unusual to have this many wet days in October. Yeah. You know, usually like if we're going to plan outdoor shoots or hikes or things like that, the thing you have to worry about is, are you warm enough? <laughs> right. Now here we are in mid-October and we're worrying about like, is it raining? Do we have bug spray? It's really yes. interesting. Do you have your rubber boots along? Right, right. Yeah. But it is great for being outside when it's not raining. The weather has been incredible. Right. Yeah, it's been warm and nice, but um, yeah, Steve just said it's supposed to be a cold, cold winter. I think if you are a Farmer's Almanac follower, the Farmer's Almanac said cold and snowy. Tell well, we did get away last winter with a pretty mild winter. Yes, yes. So we'll see. We'll see what uh, comes our way, but yeah. We'll hang in there. I mean, if it is really cold and snowy, it might be a great opportunity to walk on the river, which I love to do in the winter when the river freezes and you know it's frozen, just going out there because it's such a unique perspective to look at the world around you from the river. Right. Yeah. The only other way you see that is like if you're on a, in a kayak, for example, right? Yes. But a couple of winters ago, there was so much snow, you really couldn't access the river. Right. And then last winter was it was just warm enough that I never felt 100% confident, you know, getting out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think we had a stretch maybe in January, but um, yeah, not, it didn't stick around. So, although if we continue with these Drew days, I'm definitely going to switch out my like camera light, for, like a UV light. Cause although <laughs> that I'm a little solar panel, I need some, I need some sun and some vitamin D to keep my brain happy. And yeah, we'll see. Steve, thanks for that prognostication from Fond du Lac. Yeah, prognostication. <laughs> Fancy word. <laughs> it took me a while. It took me all of that time to come up with that word. But <laughs> I'm, I am so impressed. Oh, Connor just popped on. Good morning, Connor. Pretty accurate. Gotta love the almanac. It says whether, whether the weather is favorable or not, it gives time to prepare. Thanks, right. Connor. Thanks, Alex. Connor. Nice to see you. Yeah, what I thought was the case, the prediction for this year. You are on point. Well, while while the weather is still nice, then it is time to get outside to get as much vitamin D as we can. Kristen, have you heard of the Mammoth Hike Challenge on the Ice Age Trail? So I have not, and I'm super excited to hear about this. So tell us about it. So it's cool. So the Ice Age Trail is a thousand miles that it winds like winds its way through Wisconsin. And we're really fortunate because here on the coolest coast, there are a number of segments um, in Keel, in Manitowoc, in Two Rivers, and through Point Beach. Mm -hmm. So in October, it's called the Mammoth Hike Challenge. And you just have to hike 41 miles on any of the segments and visit three of the communities. So Jason and I have been trying to do it. We've got a couple of miles in so far. And it's cool because we've been discovering like new places right here in Manitowoc County. And when we were walking um, on the segment in Two Rivers towards Point Beach, we got to the beach and there's this sign and it says, walk on beach for 2.1 miles. And I was like, I love this order. This is awesome. <laughs> and it looks like it was a stunning, like sunny day. Maybe a little windy because there's some waves, but not really. It was perfect. You know, the wind was just light enough so that you didn't get warm. Sure. But yeah, otherwise it was perfect. Right. Um, that looks like it's really well marked. So I saw a 
yellow rectangle on there. So where did you pick that trail up? So um, we actually started um, <clears throat> at Neshota Beach in Two Rivers. And if you pay attention, yep, Kristen, you called out that yellow blaze that's under the actual sign itself. Yep. That indicates the Ice Age Trail. So at, at Neshota Beach, if you notice, a lot of the signs will have the yellow blaze and you can just keep following it. Nice. Uh, they also have like a nice map online to give you an idea of where you're heading. Mm -hmm. I feel like we picked up part of that trail. We went camping really early the last week in April last year and we hiked behind we were we stayed at Sheffels in two rivers which was right next to port sandy bay and you can access the ice age trail right behind there and we got on and i think it was probably yellow rectangles probably based on what you're saying so we were maybe a little bit farther north than the space you were talking about but it wound through the woods and it was so well marked and we had such a great time hiking around but um yeah really cool what a cool yeah. I, That's like actually said, the next part we want to jump on is over there in Point Beach. Yeah, like what a cool order or maybe a blessing to be able to come to this beautiful space along Lake Michigan and have it say, okay, just keep on going for two more miles. <laughs> the next two miles is all beach. It's like, yes, that's awesome. Uh, and it, it turns out that the Mariner's Trail is also um, part of the Ice Age Trail. Oh, I so if you look that. Yeah, if you look closely on some of the Mariner's Trail signs, you'll find those yellow blazes. Sure. I wonder, like, has it always been that Where way? Or is that new? I think it's relatively new. That's really cool. What yeah. a special thing for us to be, again, Mariner's Trail's cool. We've talked about this probably a hundred times, but for it to be noted as part of that statewide hiking trail, I think is makes it really special. And what's cool is that not every community has the Ice Age Trail, right? right? Like it's got a very specific course. And so here we are, and it literally like winds through our communities. It's pretty cool. Sure. How did you find out about the Mammoth Hike Challenge? Um, I was actually, um, you know, on Facebook looking at upcoming events and looking at the Ice Age Trail. And there was... Um, there were comments about it and I'm like, wait, what? And so I just explored it a little and I'm like, we can do this. We can yeah. do this. That's awesome. Uh, Steve, to answer your question, there's a county park behind the hotel that has fabulous trails. There's multiple trails and paths there. Um, I know the last time we were there, there was a couple that um, some trees and some things had fallen down. So one of the trails was closed, but there is wonderful hiking behind there to answer your question. There is. I don't know if it's part of the Ice Age Trail, but it might be because it goes all the way up to Sturgeon Bay. So it has to cross through sure. somewhere. Yep. Yeah. And Mary confirmed that Maribel Caves has great trails. Yes. Yeah. And there's a playground there. There is uh, shelters there. There's all kinds of stuff there. It's a great, that's a great park. Yeah. And if you're an adventure bike rider, they've got a pretty cool like mountain bike path too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. Well, good luck with your challenge. You know, when I hear 40, 40 miles kind of sounds like a lot, but when you think about it, there's 31 days in October. So really you would have to do like a mile and a half a day. This is my very quick math, a mile and a half a day. So if you go out and you do a couple of miles of hike, like it, that this is a reasonable, very attainable goal. I think so too. And the fact that, you know, I'm doing it with Jason, it's awesome. It's a great reason, you know, to be together. It's good for fitness. It's good for, you know, our mental health and being outside. Right. Yeah. I That's love so it. Cool. What a great way to use your weekends. Thanks. Speaking of being outside, Kristen, I love this picture that you took. <laughs> yeah. So this, so this weekend on Saturday, I went with my mom and we took our little girls and we went apple picking at Hillside Orchards in Casco. Um, which is just north of here, about maybe 45 minutes or so. And this, the skies were just kind of puffy, but cloudy and had that color variation. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, this is like a Tina Priggy photo shot. I've got to take this <laughs> snap of this tree. And um, I love how gnarly it looks. Like apple trees are not necessarily nice looking trees. Um, and the apples are all laying on the ground. And so I thought I snapped this and I send it right to Tina and Jason and said, <laughs> here's a picture for today because it just is perfect. So all right, viewers, let me ask you this. And Kristen, you weigh in too. Doesn't this look like something out of like the wizard of Oz? It, it looks like it is staged. I mean, it's got that perfect little gravel road in front and then, yeah, like the gnarly tree could come to life. And then like the way the apples are spilled on the ground with that little sign, it's almost like 
come on, little kids, try an apple. You know, I don't know. There's something about it that I'm going to just very carefully pick one of these up and throw it at you like in the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I love exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So we like the kid, this has kind of been a family tradition for us. And there's been different combinations of, you know, my sister or sister-in-law or Doug's gone some years. And so this year it was my nephew and my two little girls and my mom. And we had such a great time. And the kids do such a good job picking. We had like, I don't know, three or four like little bags. I'm going to say little bags are like the size of a grocery bag. And then there's like, I don't know, because you call it bushels and half bushels. I don't know how much that is. But <laughs> there's like big bags. And um, so they picked like four or five little bags and a couple of big bags. And we were done in like 45 minutes. They did it so fast. So are there um, many apple pies to be made? There is apple pies and, um, you know, like apple crumble. And if Doug had his way, apple dumplings, um, apple sauce, certainly. Um, so we'll see. We'll see kind of what strikes our fancy. You know, one of the things about picking them fresh and then keeping them, we have like a basement refrigerator that we keep them in. They keep for a long time. So we will have fresh apples from picking typically into probably January, February without any issue. Um, oh, that's amazing. Especially, maybe not so much for eating, but especially for baking and applesauce and stuff like that. So um, that is so, yeah. awesome. And then we went on a hayride. <laughs> Mary, that's interesting. Do you uh, like applesauce and other apple things or you don't like anything apple? Um, so, but those Cortland, so a lot of them, like we typically pick Macintosh for baking. They do not really have that. The Macs kind of just like came to be and then fell off the trees this year. So they didn't have a lot of Macintosh, but um the Cortlands were awesome, like huge, like so beautiful, crunchy, really nice and white on the inside. And mm. um, so it's it's been fun. And Steve, I see your note, caramel apples. I'm totally with you. We bought, we bought some caramel apples from there to eat, but that, that kind of becomes like a Packer game appetizer thing for us now as we go into October and November to slice up a bunch and maybe just douse them in a little bit of lemon so they don't get brown. And then you had to have caramel or peanut butter or something delicious to dip them in. Yep. I do love caramel apples. Yeah. You read my mind, Steven. You so know, Christina, Christina you said, oh, wait, would you pick nuts or sprinkles or nope. chocolate chips? What would nope. you pick? None. Nothing. Straight <gasps> up just the caramel. Okay. Yeah, I know. Viewers, tell us what you like on your caramel apples. I think I might be an outlier in that regard, but I just want the caramel and I just want the apple. I don't want any extra candy stuff. And I don't really like to add nuts to anything except like a salad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would take, I mean, these, the one that I had had peanuts on it and it was very good because it's like texturally different than the rest. Um, but I think I would actually pick salted roasted pecans if I were going to be choosy. On your caramel <laughs> apple? Yes. Oh my gosh. Salty, like the salty with the caramel. Oh. Nope. Totally unnecessary. It's like adding cheese to apple pie. It's just <laughs> unnecessary. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so, you know, you were talking about apples being measured by the bushel, right? And like, who has any idea of like what that actually indicates? A bushel, right? I saw this meme and it cracked me up because there was a sinkhole that had developed in a road. That's not the funny part, but there's the sinkhole and there were two news reporters and the one news reporter described it as being two refrigerators wide. Oh, right? okay. So, and then somebody from Europe said, Americans will use anything except the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, visually two refrigerators makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think it's brilliant. I do too. <laughs> That is true, though. <clears throat> Crumbled Oreos and roasted sunflower seeds. Okay, Stephen, that sounds nice, but not on a caramel apple. <laughs> yeah, I um, I can I can get into the caramel or the uh, crushed Oreos as well. Not so much sunflower seeds, but um, Oreos is a definite yes for me. On ice cream, sure, but a caramel apple, I just want the caramel. So listen, there's this company in Cedarburg called Amy's Amy's Caramel Apples. If you've never had them. Just go online and buy one and have it shipped. They're expensive. Oh. I promise you it's worth it. 
but they dip them in their homemade caramel and then they dip them a second time in white chocolate, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, like all these amazing things. And then they put stuff on the outside. So Oreos, pecans, they have all these different versions. They are amaze balls, like so <laughs> good. So good. I think the reason, I think one of the reasons that I don't like to eat a caramel apple that way is because then there's guilt, right? Because then it's like some sweet treat, right? When it's got all of that other yummy stuff on it. But if it's caramel on an apple, then it's still like a, I can, I don't know. You think it's trick myself into believing that it's like a healthy choice, right? Like, oh, it's apple with just this little bit of caramel. Right. But nuts on it would be healthy. You'd be uh, increasing your good, good fats and increasing your protein by putting nuts on. Yeah. What else can we talk about here, Kristen? <laughs> Let's talk about this. This is kind of amaze balls. This is kind of amaze balls. Oh, Chris Cornelli said she's a caramel only girl too. That shocks me, Chris. You're such a dynamic woman. I can't believe you're caramel only. Chris, I hear you. Thank you. Thank you for weighing in on that. Um, this is my oldest daughter, Grace. She had the really cool opportunity to go mentor hunt for her first time with my husband, Doug, this weekend. And if you don't believe in hunting, I'm very sorry, but this is a, a new tradition for our family. And Grace shot this first, her first doe um, by herself and was so excited. It's a huge deer, by the way. So um, she got, she was very lucky to experience literally farm to table because they um, ate the tenderloins on Saturday night. And um, so that was a cool experience. And then our family will get to keep the venison from this for this winter. So I'm so proud of her because, um, you know, taking the life of an animal is not an easy thing. And um, she knows she's contributing to our refrigerator and getting to do this. And um, it was such a cool experience for her and Doug to be able to go and have that one-on-one -on -one time together. So I'm proud of her. I think it's really, really cool that she did that. Do you get to do anything with the skin? Um, we didn't with this particular one. Um, sometimes they get donated. The processors just take care of it. So um, it went with a butcher shop on the west side of the state um, to be processed because it was so warm out. That's the other thing. Like typically when you shoot a deer in like November or even black powder seasons in December, you it's cold. So there's not this like urgency around getting it somewhere and getting it processed. Well, where they hunted this weekend, it was like 72 degrees during the day. So they had to respond fairly quickly um, to do it. So, but yeah, we mm -hmm. use the ground venison for tacos and sloppy joes and meatballs and just all kinds of things. And so um, she was over the moon, so happy um, and so excited. So I'm glad that they had a great weekend. So does she take hunting lessons somewhere? You know what I mean? Where she learns like about gun safety and like practices her shot and things like that before she goes, or is that all happening in the field? Yep. So the idea with the mentor hunt is that adult is there to coach them through the process and to help them do what they need to do. So in this particular case, they um, actually shot Doug's crossbow this weekend, which they've, the girls have all done in our backyard with Doug before. Um, so she was familiar with handling it and how to use it. Um, and then with a mentor hunt, you do not have to have hunter safety complete because you have a mentor there. Um, but she will be going through hunter safety um, in the near future so that she's well prepared to be able to continue hunting and doing it hopefully someday on her own. Interesting. So, yeah. Well, speaking of hunting, not the same kind at all, but <laughs> <laughs> with the pandemic, you know, exchanges between Manitowoc and sister city Kamigawa, Japan have all been postponed, right? Because travel has been postponed. Right. So a couple of us uh, from the Manitowoc International Relations Association. We went around town the other day and we started like capturing pictures of some of the new developments. And we're gonna have a virtual exchange with them to say like, hey, since you've last been here, look at some of these cool things that have happened. And then they're gonna reciprocate and do the same thing. You know, like what's changed in Kamigawa since people have visited. So it was kind of like hunting, right? Like going all over and like capturing pictures. And we just had so much fun I think it increased our appreciation too for some of the new developments and beautiful things that have been happening. Um, but I hadn't seen this because it's kind of tucked down the hill from the 8th Street Bridge. Sure. Um, but, but different artists have been painting the electric boxes and I just loved this one with the crane on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in case you guys don't know, this was actually a competition put on. People had to submit designs for this 
And then they, if they got selected, then they got assigned uh, an electro box. So there's um, electro boxes definitely all downtown around the Maritime Museum, the Farmer's Market, a lot of different places that have been painted. So keep your eyes out because they're really, really cool. Yeah. And they're all in different styles. They're all different subjects by the hands of different artists. So right. it's very neat. Yeah. I wish I knew who the artist was so I could give them credit for this, but I'm sorry that I don't. Right. There's no, again, there's no signature on it. We talked about this last week. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, not not that was apparent. So I don't know if, yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know. Did you ever check the yellow table to see if there was an artist stamp or signature on it anywhere? We can't. Um, we don't have access to it until the exhibit is done. Okay. Okay. <gasps> mm. <laughs> but I definitely will. Yeah. That's very oh, cool. Hey, Stephen said that Fond du Lac did the same thing with their electric boxes. Very yep. cool. I'm yeah, thinking I need a road trip down there. Traditionally, electrical boxes are like a big green, kind of military green, like my shirt color. And I hate to say it, but kind of an eyesore, right? Like they they just don't look nice. They look industrial. So I think what a great idea to engage with local artists and have them give their vision for what they could look like and just bring pop color. Yeah, it's nice to have just these little lovely surprises as you make your way throughout the community. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I think it's because it's a magical place, right? It is. So how many new things, when was the last time that there were delegates <clears throat> from uh, Kamagawa here? I think, let's see, Manitowoc went to Kamagawa in 2018. So I think they were here in 2017. So, so it's been four years. Yeah. So, you know, like the wharf, the waterfront wine bar, bricks, pizza garden, pet skull brewing, you know, all of those places have transformed the way downtown looks. Those two buildings that are right by the bridge, for example, totally different. And then all of the flowers and the murals and. Yeah. <clears throat> right. I even fountain. think about, yeah, the fountain. I'm trying to think about even um, farther out than that. Like, I'm guessing like the development of Myers and that whole like Panera and some of the development on the west side of the city, probably none of that was in existence either. Oh, right. Right. And when you think about like the new um, Bay Care Clinic and that whole roundabout, right. all of that is new. Right. Wow. Well, they'll have a lot to check out when they come. Yeah, it'll be so great. When will, you, when will you share those photos with them? Um, there is something that's going to be planned in mid-November. Okay. How exciting. Are you looking forward? So you haven't been in Japan in three years. Yeah, it's been too long. So are you, you're, I'm guessing you're very excited to also see photos from them. Oh, so excited. So excited to just reconnect and to check in with everybody. And yep. <clears throat> and the second we can go again, I'm going to start making plans. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I think that Japan is on, I shouldn't say I think, it is on Doug and I's bucket list to do that at some point. Whether the kids come with us or we end up, it ends up being an adult trip, I'm, I'm not sure, but I just feel like the cultural experience would just be so amazing. It would be. Um, it would be. You know, we took Teak and he still talks about it. I mean, it was just so amazing for him to have that experience. Right. And it's kind of cool now, like, you know, if we're watching a movie or, you know, if there's some reference to Tokyo, I could be like, oh my God, you know, we were there. Like, right. that's that intersection that we walked in, you know, or like, <laughs> oh, that's where I had to like, you know, figure out how to take the train. Or he's just got all of these like cool imprinted experiences now. Right. Right. Wow. What a cool experience. Yeah. My dream, like on my bucket list, you know how there's the cherry blossoms that bloom in Japan and they're just incredibly beautiful. I want to follow the cherry blossom forecast. And so like start in the South where they first start blooming and just follow them until I get to the North. You know, I'm imagining it would probably take like a month. I don't have any of the logistics worked out, but wouldn't that be awesome? Our, it would be interesting to know our cherry blossoms everywhere. Like, so would you find cherry blossoms? So the, probably not the Middle East. I'm thinking it's a little too desert-like, but farther North than that would be like, I don't know, Turkey. Oh, you mean don't the laugh at my ears. Have them. Um, well, I was just talking about following them from the south of Japan to the north of Japan. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds a little bit more simple than uh, <laughs> <laughs> Turkey across the entire globe. 
Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not into that yet. <laughs> um, because in Japan, I mean, cherry blossoms are a huge and important thing. Right. And so they actually have a forecast so that you know, like when and where they have huge, like cherry blossom viewing parties. It's like a national pastime. What does one do at a cherry blossom viewing party? Hey, you know, I just want to say, Steve, starting in Washington, D.C. would be a great idea. It just I'd have to figure out if they bloom at the same time. Oh, sorry. Um, a cherry blossom viewing party. So imagine like all of these beautiful cherry blossoms blooming and they will like put down picnic blankets, for example, and they'll have picnics and drink beer and sing songs, listen to music, just chat, eat food, grill yeah. out. Yeah. So you're not actually watching view it. You're just viewing in the broader sense, not, uh, I thought maybe this was like, we're going to sit here until we see this cherry blossom actually blossom. <laughs> actually, you know what this makes me think of? Um, have you ever seen the Dennis the Menace um, movie where he has the special plant that only um, blossoms at midnight and all the people from the garden club are there waiting and Dennis ends up doing something and they miss it and it happens and dies? Have you have you guys seen this? <laughs> Go watch it. <laughs> it's a very cute, it's a very cute movie. Yeah, it sounds like classic Dennis the Menace, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Stephen mentioned that he was in D.C. several years ago for the Cherry Blossoms, and it was beautiful. Actually, that is Tammy Fricky. Good morning, Tammy. Oh, that was Tammy that said that? Oh, yeah. so sorry. <laughs> Tammy, sorry. <laughs> Don't mind Tina. She's losing it today. Um I have been, this is, this takes me all the way back to high school, but in high school, we went on an, a band and orchestra trip to Washington, D.C., and we went in spring, and the cherry blossoms were blossoming while we were there, and it was really cool. Mm -hmm. So, And, and then we only get a, a tiny glimpse of it here in Manitowoc, because there's just like five trees by the riverfront, but, right. um, you know, to really get the full experience, right, like Washington, D.C., or right. let, and I let's think go to Japan, everyone. That's right. In the in like a place like DC, you have the backdrop of the monuments and all this incredible history, right? So I think it there's something kind of that feels extra cool about that. Um, and I'm sure for you traveling to Japan and seeing again cherry blossom trees in the backdrop of being in a in a very beautiful city is uh, probably pretty neat. Yeah. So that's bucket list. <clears throat> I definitely want to do that. You know, speaking of Japan, this is some Japanese anime. Does anybody recognize this anime? So this is from this is from an anime called Naruto, and my teen is totally into Japanese anime right now. And this particular character is like Kisame, so he's like the shark guy, and his sword is wrapped because it's shark skin, so it's very dangerous as things are in anime. Yeah. So there was a costume <clears throat> uh, event, and so he made me this costume, <laughs> and I had to wear it because he so earnestly like made the sword and planned it all out. I love it. Um, I thought maybe the initial picture if he was drawing that was like your angry face when he hasn't done his chores. This is his <laughs> high school interpretation of Tina the mom when he hasn't done what he's supposed to be. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> I just need that sword then to threaten him. Yeah. Like it's not, it looks, this, the actual sword he made for you is super cool. It looks cushy, so I feel like it wouldn't hurt, but you know, maybe it would knock some sense into him if you needed to. <laughs> Yeah, it could you know give you a good like boff, but yeah, it's pretty squishy. <laughs> no uh, shark skin there. Tell, oh, me about, oh. tell me about what a boff is. Um, a boff, I'm thinking is like a soft hit, like you know okay. where you feel it, but it's like you know it's just like a boff. It's not a. It's I, have not never, a punch or a... I have never heard the term boff before. <laughs> <laughs> I could just be making it up. <laughs> I like it. If somebody else tell us if you use the word to describe a soft or maybe cushioned impact that doesn't really hurt you, just brings attention to you, right. please let us know. <laughs> and if not, maybe you could try working it into a statement at some point. There you go. I love it. So Kristen, let's wrap up with this quote that you shared, because I think this is really important. Do you want to read this? Yeah, I'm going to put my face in the square. Um, so it says, a mentor is not someone who walks ahead of us and tells us how they did it. A mentor is someone who walks alongside of us to guide us on what we can do. And um, I just really like this. So I am preparing a new class uh, for UWGB about having close networks and close relationships. And part of that is this like transition from like 
we meet somebody and then you start sailing a relationship and eventually, hopefully you're in a position to mentor guide, maybe not that initial person, but somebody to help them grow, whether it's personally or in their career. And so I love this idea of like, this is not about me and what I experienced. This is about you and what you can experience. And so the concept of walking alongside of somebody and giving them options and helping them understand maybe the pros and cons, um, and then allowing them to have that experience for themselves is just really cool. Like it's the definition of mentor. So I thought this was a cool quote. Oh, I totally agree. And I think it's a much better way for somebody to learn a skill, like to learn by doing and observing and with guidance rather than just being told what to do. Right. So, and I mean, obviously there's maybe some irony and like, I found this quote this weekend when Doug is out mentor hunting with grace and having that experience. So, um, you know, the idea of guiding us and kind of helping it be a safe space to try something new or do something different. Um, but at the same time, allowing that individual to have that experience, I think it's cool. So if you participate in my class, you might see this quote there because I think it's so fabulous that it needs to be used again. Yeah, I do too. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank yeah. you so much, everyone, for sharing your morning with us. Once again, this has been fun. The time has just flown by. Um, I do have to fly, though. I actually have an appointment that I have to get to. So thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Kristen. We'll look forward to next time on Coffee with Kristen and Tina. Bye, guys. Have a great day.